Typically what you're looking for this time of year is water conditions between 40 degrees and 48 degrees. That's when the perch are going to be most active. And hey, special shout out out there to Lloyd and Joe who has slipped into my DMs and we've been going back and forth and I've been helping them find their locations for perch fishing. Joe came back with a couple of questions like, hey, I think I targeted two big creeks. Can you help me kind of narrow down where I should fish in the Mullica River? You betcha. And then Lloyd came in and said, I saw your video about baits and I loved it, but help me find these fish on different weather conditions when it's cloudy, sunny, incoming tide, outgoing tide. And Lloyd, you got it too, buddy. There's a couple of general rules that you could really apply to white perch fishing that'll help guide where to start looking for fish. Now, one of those rules are when it gets really, really cold, and I mean, you know, some of those back bays and back creeks are starting to freeze. It's well below 40 degree water temperatures. That's when those perch will move south towards those main bays, right? Those bays are going to be a little bit warmer. It takes a lot more for the sun to both warm those up and cool those down. So there's going to be more stable water conditions closer to those bays. Now, if you're in a warming trend, that's when those fish are going to move further up the rivers into more warmer water, getting away from the bay and into waters where it's going to warm up a lot more quickly with the sun. So that'll be more in the, bra it's still brackish water, but it'll be more fresh water. Another general rule of thumb is, is that incoming tides are going to be colder than outgoing tides. So a lot of times on incoming tides, what you may want to search for, depending on the fishing trends of that week or that month, or even day by day, could be those deeper holes that offer more stable water conditions on both outgoing and incoming tide. Now, a huge mistake people make is, is they just find a deep hole somewhere. They're like, oh, deepest part of the river system, got it. Boom, that has to be where all the fish are winter holding this year. And that's a huge mistake. What you wanna look for is deeper holes in adjacent to structure, like significant water change, like secondary creeks, Areas where the perch can find refuge when it gets really cold in deeper, more stable water. But as weather warms up or those back creeks warm up, they can easily transition into shallower water or back creeks where they can have access to food, comfort from the warmer weather, and even protection from predators as they can move up into the marsh, into the reed systems, whatever they need to do. And we're going to get into it more in detail, but those are two general rules that you can apply to your pre-trip planning when you're looking for these white perch. And it could be a huge benefit to you to just narrow down on a few sections of the river system or creek system instead of trying to cover this huge wide area where you know most of that water is going to be dead zones. You're not going to be able to catch a whole lot of fish. Hello again, all my fishalots out there. It's Johnny Fishalot here, and I'm excited for this episode because it's for you fishalots that have sent me direct questions about white perch fishing in the wintertime and how you can find these fish more easily so you can get on them, catch them, load up your cooler, and have a great day when it's super cold out and you find that precious little time to go fish. So let's get into it. And all right, so this brings me to a third general rule that you can pretty much hold yourself to, and that is look for areas of the river like this and the Mullica River I'm looking at now that have quite a bit of bend to it. So you see all these bends, you see these secondary creeks and secondary channels here. That's perfect. So anytime where you can combine the two, right? You have a bend in the river as well as structure, as well as a secondary creek, well, you're going to be in business there. And those are the areas that I would focus on in my pre-trip planning to know exactly where I'm going to hit right off the bat and try to narrow down where these fish are. And all right, let's go to another example here. This is the Tuckahoe River in New Jersey. Look at all these secondary creeks coming into this river system right here. These can all, just by looking at a rough map right here, these could all be great areas to focus on fishing. You know, something at the mouth of the creek here and here and here. If you want, that could be your whole game plan for the whole day. Hey, I'm just gonna fish all these creek openings here right along the river system. And you know, that would be good. Now, to Joe's point, I think what, what happened here is he was fishing these larger creek channels here, something like this, a very wide area of a creek. Um, those can be productive, but really in the middle of the winter, these secondary small little creeks, this water back here is going to warm up tremendously, and you're going to have a lot of luck fishing these kind of systems, as opposed to big creek systems that, you know, they're just not going to warm up as quickly. So if you have days where it's really cold out and that sun, it's been cloudy, that sun really can't warm up those backwaters all that well. Well, those really big creek systems 
are just going to have colder water in it, as opposed to smaller creek systems where the sun can warm it up, maybe on a mud flat with marsh. So as the water comes out of there, there's going to be a lot more bait. There's going to be a lot more comfort for these fish, including the bait fish, like mud minnows and crabs and different things that are going to prefer that warmer water. And those perch will be on the other end of some kind of structure waiting for that current to bring them a free, easy meal. All right, now let's jump over to the Navionics section here. Let's take a look at the Mullica River first. So you can see where all these bends are. This is some ideal areas for perch fishing where the bends are because you can notice these dark areas, these black areas. Those are where the contour lines are much closer together, and that's where there's significant depth change. Now, significant depth change in and of itself is structure, and it's structure that perch will relate to. Now, in addition to that, you do have a bridge here. So this could be something to explore too, right? So you have some deep holes here right next to the bridge. That might be where some of these perch are holding up for the winter time, especially if it gets really cold. They could just duck on either side of the bridge to get out of the current, as well as to keep warm because these are some deeper holes in here. Now, another great point though here is a secondary channel. And you can tell by these contour lines here, you have significant depth change right at the mouth of this secondary channel. And this is where if you have some warmer weather on an outgoing tide, the tide is going to flush the water from this warming back creek area, this marshy areas into, well, right here's a point, an underwater point where you have shallow water sticking into a deep water ledge as well as a different uh, deep water hole. It's 35 feet right here at the end of the point. This is fantastic structure to fish off of because you have a shallow water point at the mouth of a secondary creek that could be warming up and you have another hole right up over or on the outside of the point that's about 35 feet. So anywhere in that structure from about six feet of water to in this case probably about 30 feet of water you could have perch holding up anywhere in that small little area especially on an outgoing tide where that warm water is going to be flushing in. Now this area is also pretty useful because there's some deep holes here just like I was saying before if you have really cold weather or a very cold incoming tide those fish can actually duck into these deeper holes for comfort. So here's another great spot for me right so here's a point that's sticking out into the main channel. This is a ge geographic point. This is just land sticking into the main river and this is a bend. But then you have another 20 foot hole here right next to the point. So we discussed this in a previous episode where we had a point sticking out into the main channel with a hole at the end of the point and that just produced a ton of fish for us. And same thing here. So this is a different river system. In the previous video I was fishing in Fortescue over by uh, down in Delaware but this is the same type of system. So there's a 20 foot hole, here's a 24 foot hole and it's right adjacent to this point right here. That would be something I would check out as well. All right, now let's move over to the Tuckahoe River where I'm going to show you a couple of spots that I would typically look for in my pre-trip planning leading up to fishing. And again, it's going to focus around these bends. So here's a river bend here. Here's a significant bend here. You could tell these points really break up the contours really nicely. Take a look at this point right here. So this point is sticking out into the main channel and you have this deep hole, 22 feet or 27 feet right here, right off the point. Again, that's perfect. You have a deep hole off a point that's gonna break up that water both on an incoming and outgoing tide. I would really take a look at something like that. Here's another one, here's a secondary river and oh, look right at the mouth of the secondary river, you have yet another 26 foot hole right here. Those are great spots to start looking for perch. You can cover anywhere from six foot of water all the way down to 26 feet of water. And those perch can be laid up in there depending on if it's cold or warm or cloudy or sunny, they may position themselves a little bit differently, but you can bet your bottom dollar that there's gonna be some fish associating with that structure around here. So now this is what we were talking about before. This is a cut that's going um, pretty close into the main bay and take a look at that structure right here signified by Navionics. Again, fish a lot, you have a 20 foot hole and a 25 foot hole right in this cut right here. And then you have a point here that's deeper water that's just sticking into this incredibly shallow area right here. This is less than one feet of water back here through this cut. You could bet it's gonna warm up on a sunny day. This area is gonna warm up really good. And again, you have these perch 
that have access to one foot of water all the way down to a 20 foot hole, even a 25 foot hole here according to Navionics right in this cut. And you know what fish lots if you stuck with me this far let's go to a bonus area here. This is in Delaware. This is where I was fishing on a previous trip. Don't rule out something else here that I really want to talk to you about and that is areas like this. So you don't you may not have a secondary creek but you have a lot of contour change and a lot of depth change up against a main bank. Well the majority of this bank is going to hold absolutely nothing right. Like this whole area here is going to hold absolutely nothing. Maybe something here as this deep water point is pushing into the shallows but something like this right up against the marsh right up against the bank where you have a lot of structure here a lot of deep water structure that's also a great area to start looking for perch because what happens is those perch can find those deep holes right you want to look for those contours those perch could drop off into deeper water if they want some protection from weather change but if there's a lot of predators around let's say there's some big striped bass around which you know there's a lot of resident fish back in these back creeks that are just going to eat these perch because that's what they eat <laughs> so these perch can push up into these marsh areas especially on a high tide and they can find protection from predators as well as access to food because that's going to be where the crabs are mud minnows are as well so I mentioned that on a previous episode as well don't be afraid to kind of nose your boat up nose your kayak up right into those marsh systems and just drop into those marsh areas where those perch may be pushing up to find some protection from predators to find protection from really fast moving currents these are also good spots when you could just be on a really cold cold trend where you're actually going to want to look for some deeper water along the banks where those fish could have protection from basically water movement and that can include wind too fish a lot so don't forget about the wind yes you have your tides on an incoming tide that water is going to be a little bit colder on an outgoing tide it might be a little bit warmer depending if it's been sunny warm cloudy rainy whatever okay but the wind pushes a lot of water in these back creeks so if you got a northeast wind and those fish are cold well Maybe look for areas where the fish can duck out of the wind or if those fish are really active, they're really looking to eat, they're in an active part of the day, maybe right smack in the middle of the day where it's warmest. Maybe look for wind blown shorelines on a slack tide because that's where the water is being moved to and that's where the bait could be getting pushed. So let's say you have a, a northwest or northeast wind right here. This area right here might be beneficial. It's a wind blown shoreline. It's next to a steep drop off. You know that could be an area where you look to as well. So don't be afraid to pivot if you're out there and you're thinking oh you know these fish are cold they're going to want to look to warm up. Well maybe they're on that wind blown shoreline where they're just looking to take advantage of some easy meals in the middle of the day before it gets really cold at night and they're going to drop off into those deeper holes and deeper zones. So just be mindful of that you know if you're fishing one side of the river and it's just not working out for you fish the other side. If you're fishing those creek mouths and it's not working out for you try to find some deeper holes along those bends in the river system. And hey finding the fish is a major part of the equation but you also do need to know the know-how of how to read the water in order to find the exact spot where those actively feeding fish are. You need to know baits, rigs, the whole nine yards to really up your perch game and that's what these videos are for right here so feel free to click on these end cards if you really want to up your perch fishing game. All right, fish lots, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you out there on the walk.